I'm joined now live from Hong Kong by Matul Katesha. He's global head of Forex strategy at Credit Agricole CIB. So thanks very much for joining us, uh, Matul. Are you surprised uh, at how much things have changed in the last few months? We now have the Fed uh, putting the exit strategy you know, firmly on the back burner. Meanwhile, Triche making that move towards the exit. Yeah, I think it surprised a lot of people. Uh, you know, a few months back, uh, even a few weeks back, uh, the anticipation was that the European economy would slow down very sharply because of austerity measures that were kicking in and would kick in, and the U.S. economy would outperform. And, and uh, lo and behold, we've got a very different situation. The U.S. economy uh, is disappointing uh, in terms of the data that's being released over recent weeks. The outlook looks increasingly negative. Uh, there's speculation, of course, about increased quantitative easing. And as you mentioned, uh, the ECB perhaps in a different situation. But I wouldn't read so much into this yet, and I still think Europe will slow down, but clearly uh, doubts are setting in about this outperformance of the U.S. economy. I also wonder, you know, is it, is it really possible that Europe is in a better situation? I mean, can it be? Well, I think what we've seen is that uh, the data in the first half of the year in Europe has been pretty good, but that has masked a divergence in growth. We know that Germany has been the leader of growth, and Northern Europe in particular, and Southern Europe has, has lagged behind. So the problem for policymakers in Europe, and especially for uh, Mr. Trichet, is that we're seeing one policy for economies that are moving in different directions in Europe. And I think that's perhaps as big a problem as growth slowing down as in the U.S. So it's not an easy journey by any means. And, of course, even if uh, Jean-Claude Trichet wants to start talking about exit strategy, he has to be very wary uh, that we've got much slower growth in Europe and, and southern Europe. And these economies aren't going to be particularly keen on getting uh, an exit strategy coming through very quickly. Matul, what's the real dilemma here for the central bankers at Jackson Hole? I mean, they're talking about how to reignite economies here. You know, is the answer printing money, quantitative easing, or is it perhaps to let these economies go through a bit of pain and get a handle on budget deficits? Well, I think the problem here is that the uh, options are becoming more and more limited. We've had so many stimulus measures, both from a monetary and a fiscal perspective, since the financial crisis, since the sovereign crisis, that the options are becoming more limited. And clearly, it's turning into a crisis of confidence and, and deflation risks are intensifying. So there's not a great deal, as you say, uh, central bankers could start printing money more aggressively. And, and the key question for many people is whether the Fed not just maintains the size of its balance sheet, but whether it starts starts printing more money and increasing the balance sheet. And this is going to be an important issue for the U.S., especially if growth slows down much more than the Fed expects. Now, do you think we're going to get more clarity uh, from Ben Bernanke when he speaks a little bit later on today on that front? Well, I hope so. I think this is what we're all waiting for. It's why markets are trading pretty flat at the moment. It's why uh, I think we're not seeing a great deal of movement in currency markets. So, uh, you know, there could be a disappointment. Bernanke may not say anything particularly new, but uh, I think he will again indicate that the all options are open, that the Fed may uh, move towards increased quantitative easing if necessary. But bear in mind there's a few hawks still on the, uh, on the Fed uh, who don't want to move in that direction just yet. Talk about running out of options, Matul. What does Japan do with this rising yen and persistent deflation? Well, it's a big problem for Japan. Clearly, uh, the measures that have been enacted in recent months have not been strong enough. Uh, as we heard before, a lot of yen strength is a result of the current crisis. It's risk aversion, buying yen. Uh, it's not necessarily based on a positive economic outlook. Uh, I don't think there's a great deal that Japan can do. They can intervene, but uh, as we heard, if the Fed or the ECB does not join the Bank of Japan uh, in intervening in currency markets, it will have very little impact. And the last time the, the Japanese intervened was several years ago, so I think they've learned their lesson. So I think what we may see is unconventional policies. It's more outright JGB buying, unsterilized JGB buying, and other measures perhaps to add liquidity into the markets. That's perhaps all they can do. Uh, without effectively intervening in the FX markets. Matul Katecha, Global Head of Forex Strategy at Credit Agricole, joining us there from Hong Kong. We thank you very much for your time this morning.